All right, Speed City fans, we're very excited. Formula One event for this weekend, and we're at the W Series, a little event that they had in downtown Austin at the Austin Community College campus. But we're with an American young female driver, and you'll know her name because she's been on the show before, Sabre Cook. Welcome back to Speed City. Thank you guys for having me. First and foremost, what, what's been going on here? Uh, well, I'm, I'm here mostly as an engineer, I guess, rather cool. than a driver. Um, the, they just asked me to come speak to the students um, on my engineering career and things that I've learned and just try to steer them um, steer them forward and in the right direction for, for their young careers going forward. And let's tell our audience what that is. You did um, some time with the Infinity program, I think, uh, for basically the, the Formula One Renault team. Uh, yeah, so what I did is, so I won the Infinity Engineering Academy in 2018, and then I went and worked for Infinity Global in 2019, and then Renault F1, and, which is now Alpine F1, mm -hmm. and then I, now I do more independent contract stuff, and most recently worked for Formula Mazda, because they have the new FMZR that's coming out this year. Well, what type of engineering exactly? Uh, well, I'm a mechanical engineer. Is mechanical engineering is mm -hmm. what I graduated in? Um, but in I've, I, mechanical engineering allows you to do a lot of different things. So I've worked in anything from like you know design to full like vehicle integration to testing to composite. So it just kind of it depends on uh, on the job. You know, and I read your profile just yesterday, and one of the points that you made was your ambition was yeah to carry on driving, do what you're doing but you'd like to be an F1 engineer. And I think that's so inspiring to young girls who probably wouldn't think of that. Yeah, I think that there's so many jobs out there, especially in STEM, that like people don't even see as a tangible thing or don't realize they have the ability to do it. And I remember meeting a young girl actually in Nashville two years ago. And she said to me, she was working as a receptionist at the local Infinity dealership. <laughs> and she said to me, I didn't realize that girls could be an en engineer. And I just like, it kind of broke my heart a little yeah. bit because, you know, here this is a young woman that's not much younger than I am yeah. in modern day America. And she didn't know that that was an option. That's a really good story. Yeah. That is stunning. He's got, he's got a... Uh, my, I, I was so... I actually had planned on trying to pick up my daughter, who's a junior in high school, right around the corner from here. Yeah. But the timing didn't work. And I wanted her to, oh. to, to meet you and, and see what you're doing because she is very math, mathematical, analytical, yeah. and competitive. I thought it would be great, but... Uh, that would be a perfect job for her then. Yeah, yeah she would actually. Right into uh, that that's a complete car head. There you go. <laughs> now, you're from Colorado. Yes. Tell us, I mean, why is it, why would a girl from Colorado start to get into motor racing? <laughs> uh, probably because I had some pretty cool parents. Ah. And my dad, he used to race motocross and supercross professionally back oh. in the 80s. Okay. Um, yeah. So he is, you know, one of those people that's good at anything. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, he found karting after he retired. And so he got me and my brother into it because obviously my parents didn't want us racing motorcycles. No. So yeah, that, that's how I got into it. And what did you begin with? Uh, karting. It, it, when I was about eight years old, I drove my own cart for the first time. And how'd you get on? Um, I was so excited at first. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I just like took off. And I didn't understand that you have to slow down to go ah. through corners. Ah. So I tried to go way too fast. It's a good start, though. I like the attitude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't end so well because I ended up spinning out. And I, got, I remember I kind of scared myself a little bit. Right. And I was like, oh, no. And so then I, uh, I drove quite slow for the, like the next year and a half, two years maybe. And they literally, they called me driving this Daisy. My, my oh, thing, no. nickname. <laughs> it was bad. And like, I, and I don't know, one day I was getting teased by a young boy um, at a cart race in Steamboat. And he was like, you're slow and you're, I'm going to always beat you and you can't win and all this stuff. And uh -oh. I didn't like that. No, nah. no, I did not like that. So then I went to my dad. I was in tears, and I was like, I, "If I had a faster cart, I could win." Because at the time, I had a cart that didn't exactly like it couldn't have won the race anyways because it was like a hand-me-down cart that wasn't especially supposed to be in the series anyways. Right. And so he's like, "Well, okay then." And so went and and got me the proper cart for the category, and then I went out and won my very first race in it by ten seconds. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was kind of like a you know this. The switch got flipped. Yeah. And from then you were smitten. That was it. You were, you, you were going to do this. What did your yeah. parents think when you decided, hey, I want to take this seriously? 
Um, obviously my dad was he extremely <laughs> supportive of it. And I remember some of my best memories growing up is just traveling around the country, you know, like just me and my dad, like going to the races, trying to, you know, make it happen against these big teams. And so it was just, I had a lot of like really great experiences with that. And my mom was obviously supportive as well. Cause she likes, she likes racing and she was into racing already, which is how she met my dad. Um, ah. but she did, she did, she was a little skeptical there for a few years, you know, like focus on school and everything still and but now she obviously sees you know what it's become and she really sees the potential um and so she's a, she's still very supportive and helps me you know get through those tough times when they come you know we have been on speed city i think it's mainly because of jonathan and Les. all three of us have always been real supportive of women we get super excited everybody from danica patrick to anybody that's racing any she's females. here this weekend yeah that's right Danica's. she is yeah she's working yeah. with scott oh but, interesting but um what was I going to say? Oh, we we get excited about it, but talk about how excited you guys were when you found out you were going to be on the stage with Formula One. I mean, that had to be incredible. When I heard that, that's when I immediately called you. I was like, mm. did you hear they're going to be on the stage with Formula One, which means they're coming here, which we're really excited. Yeah, when, when we were all told that, I mean, there was, there was like whispers and we're like, is it going to happen? And then it obviously came together and we were all just extremely excited because... I mean, that's one of the biggest stages that you can be on in the world. And just being in that paddock and, and with that exposure, we knew it was going to be huge for W Series and huge for us, e each one of us personally. There's a guy called Michael coming this weekend. I need you to go and have a chat with him and okay. tell him that you are ready for that Alfa Romeo seat. Are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll put my best best foot forward, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I think it might be a tough a tough uh, part right now to convince the convince. On a more forward. serious note, though, are, are, are you more aware now as an American um, of the interest in international racing since you've been involved? Uh, you mean like how... Just generally, Formula One, oh, uh, the W Series, yeah. everything. Of Netflix I... and all that have grown the sport. Yeah. And... Well, Are you I mean, finding I... more people <clears throat> understand what you do? Absolutely. Like, I can't tell you... I actually have one of my best friends is coming to the race this week with her fiancé and their friends because they started watching the Netflix show. There you go. And then they fr they start to, like, they'll send me, text me questions like, what does it mean when they do this and this and this? Because <laughs> ah, they, they start to get so excited about it. And I think it's brilliant what the Netflix series has done because it's, like, it's opened up into the American market, whereas before, like, no one knew about it. And it just, it made me so sad because obviously in the UK, mm, like, it was a dream come true. Like, it's normal everyday part of life there yeah. you, it's totally normal for a family to go to a racetrack on a weekend and go watch a race and here i mean that's that's not not so common we were just talking to caitlin about the fact that uh, jamie chadwick's now like a household name because she's doing these ibm adverts so mm -hmm. you know finally we're getting some you know some notoriety as it were for yeah. women in motorsport yeah, exactly. It's it's definitely pushed things forward a lot. And I mean, I think that the Fact W Series came along just kind of like it basically fast forwarded everything almost like by five years, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. So what's the plan? What's what's Miss Cook going to do? Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm I, I'm looking at IMSA. I'm one of the scholarship finalists for the mm -hmm. diversity scholarship going into next year. That would be awesome. We'll get notified of who wins that in. Uh, and what next. does that bring you? What is it? Well, so that covers um, entry fees, um, set of tires, fuel for the weekend, so a suit, and some like basically media um, media help and support. So, I mean, yes, it's not a full budget, but it still helps, yeah. obviously, with leverage and, and getting you part of the way there with the with the funding. So, that um, we submit that this week, and then we get to find out on November 5th. So, that's going to be um, something that could come together, um, as well as, obviously, you know, my dream is still uh, growing up in the States. IndyCar is amazing, and we're seeing so many, like, XF1 drivers, mm -hmm. Formula 2 drivers, um, uh, Formula E drivers all coming to yeah. IndyCar. So, like, it's just, it's becoming a serious series to, to be reckoned with. Yeah, I mean, it's when, when Hulkenberg gets a test, he's, he's testing on Monday, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. woo! Yeah, we just saw the Arrow uh, McLaren truck drive up at uh, we were wondering what they were doing but mm -hmm. uh, yeah these are exciting times um i mean yeah, would you believe do you still believe the sort of world's your oyster as it were in terms of what you want to do i think so i think there's so many things that like how we just talked about there's so many things that you can do that you don't realize you can do mm -hmm. and right. the opportunities that are out there and right now with the way that diversity is growing around the globe i think you know sky's the limit with what really could happen in the next few years just because 
the opportunities are out there and you know the OEMs are really pushing mm. to get diversity involved so I think that there's a lot of special things that could come together. I think in motor racing the the barriers are gone. I think the barriers to do whatever you want to do whether it's engineering, driving, wherever in the sport I think those barriers they may not be a hundred percent but they're close to being gone. Do you feel that way? Uh, honestly I feel that way like if I if I had enough money, I could go run into lights and, you know, as yeah. soon as I wanted to. And as an engineer, I feel like I could apply to any job that I wanted to, and I could get into to doing something in, in the team that I desired. It seems like such a missed opportunity for, mm. you know, motorsport, we all know that there's a lot of, they have to have money to get into motorsport, right? But it seems like such a missed opportunity for, market, market. for marketing <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, it, because it, who, who, you know, who are all those guys that run around as bronze drivers in IMSA? And right. who are all those, you yeah. know, the guys that watch racing they have a lot of money yeah. and there's a lot of money circulating in the paddocks and i think companies don't realize that and they miss out on connecting with these companies and these people that are already in something that they're passionate about and they don't see the value always with with building partnerships there yeah very good point well hey final comment um how exciting is friday morning we're going to be in the commentary booth um looking at you uh, going up that hill for the first time. Oh, I'm excited for Formula it. One? The crowd. In yeah. front of that huge crowd that's yeah. going to be there. It, well, it's been amazing at all the other tracks so far, like being with F1. And I remember Zanfort was just orange everywhere. <laughs> wow. So that was pretty cool. But I am so excited for there, it to be, you know, my home crowd. Yeah, right. So that, that for, for me is going to be really special. My parents are both coming this weekend. Oh, that's like, great. It's going to be a really cool, cool weekend. So I'm that's very excited. Great. That's awesome. Well, Sabre Cook, thank you very much. We really appreciate your time, and we want to wish you the best of luck this weekend, and good luck with the scholarship and the rest of the season. And also, tell everybody how they can find you on social yes. media, websites, whatever and you like. And your like car number. Yeah, your car number. <laughs> well, the girls yeah, are exactly. watching. What, who should they cheer on? Um, so, car number 37 has right. a giant American flag on it, so I hope <laughs> gotcha. that you don't miss it. Gotcha. Um, as far as socials go, um, on Facebook, it's Sabre Cook Racing. On Twitter and Instagram, it's just Sabre Cook. And LinkedIn is Sabre Cook as well sabercookracing.com and you will be able to find me on one of those and finally what would you say to that 12 year old girl that's out there with her dad this weekend for the first time what would you say if they were interested in what you're doing enjoy the experience and go for it and don't let anyone else put their limitations on you perfect sabercook speed city